Hi, good morning. Um, whew, I'll start with being honest. I'm extremely nervous. I have to pee. I'll do whatever I can. My English is not great. Please help me. I'll f if I'll forget the word, I'll ask you. So please help me. So, and I have notes written down, which is not professional, but whatever. Okay. So I think that people from Jerusalem are actually allergic to lack of authenticity. Right? Like you get a rash if someone that is not authentic is standing in front of you. So I think Jerusalem is the most perfect place to talk about honesty. Uh, my name is Michal Gassner. As you can see, I was born in Jerusalem, really close by actually. And I used to walk through here every day for uh, my first and second grades. And I had a leopard friend actually that, that was hospitalized here. So he used to wave for me from the other side of the road. I never saw his face because he was like wrapped in bandages, but I will never forget him and his like slow wave from the other side. Um, and today I'm a scriptwriter and a director, and I'm going to talk about honesty and filmmaking. Um, I before I did this, I abandoned. I'm actually abandoning a career of nine years of uh, humanitarian work. So it's really exciting for me to be here and to be speaking about my art. So I want to start with a short story. Two years ago, I traveled to Tribeca Film Festival with my short film, Big Sister, uh, that I made in the Sam Spiegel School. And I had the right clothing, and I had my um, business card printed out, and like I had everything exactly as I understood it should be. I had an apartment in the other side of Brooklyn so I can get on time to my screening in Manhattan. It was crazy. And my, my film was screened with four more short films. And after the screening, each time we had a Q&A. So all the directors used to stand in a line and wait for questions from the audience. And there was one film in, in, this, like in the, our screening that I truly, and I'm sorry, I really hated. It was... Really, it was kitsch. It was, it had, it, it had like tons of money. I will never get this kind of funding in Israel. And it was extremely patri patriotic about 9-11. And it wasn't made well. And the director, she was awesome. Like she made me feel like, a, like I had everything wrong. And so we were standing in this line and, there's, and then come the question from the audience. When did you feel that your film is perfect? What? So <laughs> I grabbed the mic and I'm like, actually, I don't feel my film is perfect. Like I see myself in the film and I see all my mistakes and my wrong decisions. And there was like, real, the audience was really quiet. And then she grabs the mic with her power suit, you know? And she's like, a film is perfect only when it meets the perfect audience. And they were all like clapping, it was amazing. <laughs> Honesty, right? So, I think there is a conflict between honesty and the filmmaking industry. But for me, until now, I'm, I'm, just, I'm a young filmmaker, honesty is the key. And it's also a way to keep my sanity, because it's not easy in this, uh, in this field. And we're taught in school, I think that every creative person hears the fact that we need to make art that is close to us, that we feel that is from our hearts. But why? And I can tell you that the stories I want to make are stories that are healing, are stories that the people who watch them feel their humanity magnetized to, uh, to the humanity on the, f on the screen. And I, I want that because I believe that art can free us from, being, from feeling lonely. So I choose my characters by their vulnerability. Verno, ver you got it? Okay, cool. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think there's a question, why does it work? And I think it's, wor it's working because we're all scared. We're scared that everything we do won't work. We're scared that and we will succeed. We're scared that people will see that we're trying too hard. And we're scared because we are, we don't like, see, I'm scared. <laughs> um, 
we're scared because we don't, I, I, okay, I'm afraid that you'll, you'll all get up and walk away, that you'll think I'm a fraud. It's scary. And I think that fear is a really strong place to, to work from because what we're actually scared of is the unknown. And this is the moment that creativity is burned because when I try to do something out of this chaos, to create into this chaos, I do something that is authentic. I have to, I have to use uh, my fear to be creative because if I won't be creative, you guys can walk away. If I won't be creative and create into the chaos, into the tova vo, into this unknownness, it will be something that we already saw. So today I'm going to talk about three ways, three points in the process of making that are connected to honesty. And I just touched the first one, which is how to pick your project. And I think that picking a project from the, at the point that you're scared and that you have to be creative to overcome this fear, that's, like, for, that's for me a really, really good point to start with. Okay. So now I want to tell you about the project I'm working on right now, so we can put the picture. Thank you. So in the last two years, I'm working on a main project, uh, which is actually, it, hap it came to me in a nightmare I had, because, um, OK, this, will, this is weird. This is me with a Kalachnikov. Um, and it's from when I was in the army. And it's the only picture I have from that time. And it's because I used to, I served in a Sayeret Matkal, it's a commando unit, and I was a navigation guide. So it was very dirty, very manly, very, like, very intense, and I was extremely motivated to be there. But then, in the end, I finished when I refused an order. And but I forgot it all. Like, I forgot what happened. The only thing I could remember is that I'm, I started the army, extremely motivated, and I finished it when I had to take a flight and run away from the country because refusing an order is a really big thing. So they didn't want to put me in jail, but they did uh, schedule like seven or eight polygraph tests that I should go through, and I, was, I really didn't want to. But then, four years ago, I was writing a piece for school about PTSD, men's PTSD in the army. And while I was working on it and watching a lot of films, I woke up from this nightmare I started with at the middle of the night. And in the nightmare, in the, I remembered everything that happened. All the moments that I was, um, I was, wait, it, it's coming. Um, I doubted my judge, my own judgment. So all the moment I, I doubted my judgment and even the um, mission that went wrong and made me ask questions about the next one, the next mission. And that was the mission I refused in order to. And I'm telling that because I'm telling all of you that because I'm writing a TV show about this commando unit from the point of view of, of the woman. And I'm really happy about it because even talking about it, it's really scary. And writing about it is like taking gray smoke out of my lungs. Like I feel that each time I write a chapter or a synopsis or anything, I can breathe again. And that's where I picked, like that's why I picked this subject because only with, when it's, it's working in my stomach and it's moving me, I can do it. And actually, the, the show is in a really good place right now. Like, we're working, and, and I hope you'll see it on the screen. But I just came back from LA, and I had really good meetings about it. So cro fingers crossed. I hope it will continue this way. Thank you. And I want to talk about the process of making it, because I'm really enjoying it. And I have like a tip for you guys. So who here tried meditation? OK, cool. The basic idea of meditation, one of, it, one of them, is that things are changing all the time. Also, we do. So what I understood is that as a writer, there are so many depressing moments that you can't write and you hate yourself. So I have this nerdy chart, 
when I write each day what happened today. For example, if I have a day that I was like extremely creative and I love myself and it's amazing, I write that down. And the next day is probably shitty and I, like, I couldn't write anything, my cookies were burned, like everything is going wrong, write that down. <laughs> if that, th probably the next day I will be a monster and I shouldn't talk to anyone, <laughs> write that down, <laughs> okay? So after a few months I have this like free charts and the, um, and I have, like, I can see what's going to happen next month. I can schedule my writing days or my administration days or just, like, taking in inspiration days but what I, about what I learned about myself. So it's like a period, but not only for women. So I really, really, like, I really suggest it. I think it's a really good... <laughs> yeah, like, machzor. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, we can uh, watch uh, the trailer of my short film that actually brought me here. Okay, I don't know if you saw anything because it's really dark, but that's the trailer for my short film, uh, Big Sister, and it was a film that was made from a lot of pain. It's a dark film, it's very violent, and it was really, it was very healing for me to, to create it, and what I understood during the making of it was that I can't, at any moment, be focused on my small, huge wish that it will be successful. And I'll ask you again, like, who here, and I guess that you're a creative audience, so you know this, who here stands in the shower and imagining, like, imagining his speech of, of his, like, award-winning uh, Oscar of your field? Like, if you're honest, I guess that you have that. So kill it. That's my next tip. I think it's, for me, it's like, Every time I imagine myself getting a word or succeeding, it's really confusing. And I believe, I truly believe that we have to put that aside. Like we shouldn't, we should think while we're doing things that they won't succeed and that they won't have fruits. And like, don't even think of the sweet, sour juice that these fruits can bring. And for me, it was really helpful because I made this film from a um, very personal place, and each festival it got in, and, and like happily I was able to travel around the world with this film in different festivals. It was just a surprise all over again. Like each time going somewhere with this film was a surprise, and 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 I think it, that's the present of the of this process. And even now with the TV show I'm working on, which I can't tell you who's gonna buy it but it's cool. <laughs> so it's also a surprise and I can't put, I can't be focused on it at any point because wanting it to succeed is, is, is just killing my, my sight. Like I can't see things honestly and directly and, and, and clearly. And I just want to see that I'm not Oh, and it's also really good for people with lack of confidence because like you don't have to hide your fear, your fear, you just like go with it. So just believing like I told Marcel uh, outside, she asked me, um, like she said, be optimistic, it's gonna be good. And I said, no, I think we should like, <laughs> it's gonna be bad, I'm gonna talk terribly. And like, and I really feel that if you give up all these wishes and, and wanting things to be great, it's easier to make things. And 
when I was, whatever, it's not here, when I was small, <laughs> when I was a kid, I was asked, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, a director, and I want to help animals and people in poor places. And when I was 26, I got it. I got the, my wishes, they were, I had them, okay. And I weren't as happy as I wanted, and that's why I started meditation, but um, I, the point is that I don't want to define myself through what I do. I want to define myself through what's behind what I do. And that's, inshallah, we'll always be um, doing things from love and from honesty and especially like to, to be focused enough so w the things I will make will make well, yeah, the, 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 the art I will make will have us, um, will we, will, uh, this water will help, but are also confusing. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what I want to ask for myself, and I also wish for you, that we will be focused on what's behind our making. And again, as I said, I want this to be from love and kindness and honesty, and that it will vanish loneliness as much as possible. And that's it. Thank you very much. Questions for Michal. How do you find the balance between your internal life and the needs that you have in the world? זאת אומרת, נגיד, אני לא יודע ממה את מתפרנסת, אבל זה משהו שאני נתקל בו, אני, אני גם מאוד מתחבר ל, לעשות את הדברים בצורה אותנטית, אבל לפעמים זה לוקח אותי למקומות שאין לי איך להתפרנס מהם. וזה קונפליקט שלדעתי הרבה אומנים או יוצרים... אוקיי, אז הוא שאל על איך אתה עושה כסף. זאת שאלה טובה. אז אני חושבת ש... Uh, it's a good question. There are days that I have to like uh, take a few uh, uh, editing or like short things, but Khalturot, <laughs> yes, I don't know how you translate it, sorry, world. Um, <laughs> sorry, in, in English it's just like odd jobs, right? Odd, odd jobs, yeah. But um, how honest should I answer this? <laughs> I'll be the most honest that I can. You'll think I'm a freak. That's no, no problem. Um, so I went to this metakshir. Um, How do you say metakshir? Psychic. Uh, that told me that I have a yeshut entity that is walking around with me since when, from where, yeah. And she's my, my muse, that's how she called herself. And she lately asked me to buy two crystals and for some reason I found myself actually doing that. And to lean in and to, to just doing art. And that's why I said I, I abandoned my other career, because I was traveling around the world. I lived in Burundi, Nepal, Haiti, Florida last year. Like I was trying to find, to help people and, and to do things, but at the same time to have, like to find myself. And she was like saying through him, <laughs> um, just do your art and, and financing will come. And the day after I had like, Good news, good news, good news, like this, since then. Like, only good news. So, I can give you the number of the psychic. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want, like, to, to use my muse, I can ask her if she's, yeah. But I, I'm just hoping right now. I don't know, maybe it will change. You find that uh, if you want to be honest, that can conflict with um, your, the writing of the story or the direction that uh, may say, in order to make money, you have to have this in the film, but it's not being honest. So what do you do in that situation? It's a good question. I think it's a, like, it's a subtle, um, it's a thin line that we have to walk on when we, we're creating. And until now, I was able to know that the core of what I'm writing is something that I feel that is honest, that I feel that a woman in, in 
were, that are 18 or even older will see, for example, my show and they will feel that they can find like the core of themselves in it. And of course, like once it's out there and my big good news are huge and like bigger than uh, the step I am as a, as a filmmaker. So I know that the people that are involved in money will probably, I'll have like weird casting that I would never think of and it won't feel like the, the most accurate thing and precise thing for me. But I think that if, if the heart of it is something that I feel that is honest, uh, that's, that's what's important. And yeah, filmmaking, I guess it's about um, um, Viturim, sacrifice. sacrifice, compromising, like that's, it will never be what I exactly imagined and, and that's part of the process and it's fine because that's how I learned to make it even more and more and more closer to the dream. So. Hi Michal, thanks for your talk. Um, could you talk a little bit more about the um, relationship between meditation and your creative work? Um, I know David Lynch is very into transcendental meditation and he talks a lot about how it influences his work. So I'd be keen to hear what you've got to say. Okay, as I'm going, I can also add that Yuval Noah Harari says the same thing, by the way. I think that it's mostly... Hmm. Honesty. I, it's not only meditation. Like, I... I I try everything. <laughs> and I think it's it's part of the process as as creative people to get to know as many um spiritual or uh, cultural experiences that we are we're able to 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 experience especially if I guess that in these times the world is like opening in a very very powerful way like we get a lot of options, maybe too many, maybe too much. But um, but for your question, I feel that there is. They say that a director has to make around eight thousand decisions a day on set, not all the time, but on set, and that's a lot of stress. And I guess that meditation is helping me to practice um, accepting that every decision is also giving up something. So something uh, we had a teacher that told us that once you every decision is 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 deaf actually because something is dying when you don't choose it, and it's okay because we are gonna die, and everything is dying all the time. So that's meditation. That's what made meditation have like very powerful um, um, meaning for me because I can accept these changes. I can accept my mistakes easier. I can. I can accept, um, I can breathe <laughs> better because it reminds me to breathe. Like I was meditating here before I had to, to come up here. I don't know if it worked, but it, it helped me a bit. I hope it answers your question. I just wanted to know um, two things about l lies, because we all the time we, we live with lies, white lies, shikilavan. People say, is, is this dress nice? And if you say yes, or if you say no. And also, also the second part of the question is, are we lying to ourselves every day that we're happy, that everything's good, the politicians are all honest? Are we lying about a lot of things? Uh, the meditation I practice is vipassana, and there is a, the idea of vipassana is a 10-day retreat when you don't talk. And the idea is the, the, what Buddha used to call it is sila, which means, um, probably not exactly what it means, but like being very accurate with your truth. And it's easier not to talk if you, if you want to be very true to yourself and not to lie even to yourself because once we're talking to each other, we're also lying to ourselves. And I think that stories are, are a good way to lie to ourselves. And as you said, like we use stories, we use our uh, political story or our family stories to to define ourselves in, in that way to like make boundaries between us and other people. And I really, really try not to do it. There are times that I, I feel that I'm better at it at not lying even white lies. And I think that I had like six months that I was very on top of it, of like being aware of not even telling white lies. And it felt really good. Like it felt like I'm 
It's just a practice that it's working really, really well. And with time, it was easier. And then I guess, like, it's hard to be so focused. It's hard to, to keep yourself um, from lying all the time and, and even to ourselves. And I guess that, like, it's, I would probably had, like, a not as the best time at that period when I stopped, like, being on top of that. But, um, but like I ha I did experience it's, it can work. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Could you, Michal? Could you elaborate uh, in a moment, just briefly, on where you are in the series? I'm assuming that you have a lot of the characters already done, uh, developed to some degree. Surprises might happen to everybody, of course, within the series. Have you written a few different potential shows? But the question related to honesty, and uh, I'd love to hear about what I just asked. When you're going ahead as an artist and you're producing your series from something that's close to your heart, you're being honest about your episode and even reflect on it outside of when it actually occurred, which, and you're uh, going ahead and uh, writing about something that you know about, are you writing this yourself? Are you consulting with others? And as you try to write this from your own experience, obviously there are other viewpoints out there. I think that honesty and truth, honesty is being truthful, but honesty and truth, I think we all know are not the same thing. So if I'm coming from a place where I was wrong, for instance, yes, I was partially culpable. Culpable means a sham, something like that. How can you get into the other opinions about the structure of the army, whatever it is? I'm not even going into your script. How do you do that as a point to be honest, but also being able to access something else that has truthfulness to it so we're not the soul? And I'll just even end in the middle of a sentence. I hope I'll be able to answer that. Um... I'll start first saying that, uh, so I had that dream, that nightmare that I talked about, and then I understood that I have to write this down into a show, so I uh, asked um, some, a scriptwriter to, to, to join me, and we're working on it together. So we are, we are co-workers, and we really created this kind of world that both of us feel that our heart in it, and we could do it through different um, characters, for example. The main character is based on me, but there are different characters that can be much more based on her experience. Um, wait, I'm, I'm trying to like collect my thoughts. Um, wow, wait, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, can you help me? Oh. Through, through the characters, because when when I write, I try to write characters that I not necessarily agree with, and that if they're f a full character, if they have like their own full world, so that's what takes them like that's what takes the show further. Not my idea of what I want to happen. Like it could, it can't be something that um, that I invent, it has to come through the, through the characters. So if, for example, there is the character that is based on me, I know her, we changed her a bit, and there are things that uh, at the moment, actually, should be, like her actions should be something that she would feel very close to, or honest with, not me. And like I have even, like let's say this uh, unit, <laughs> this commander unit, the, um, the commanders there and the people there that in my life were like cruel people, that's not going to be there because they have to be, they have to be a full character, an interesting person and someone that many people could relate to it. So it had, it has uh, different sides. And I think that's the way to create this um, complex world that is not only my idea of how the world should be or based on my experience, my traumas and etc. Yeah, I answered your question. Kinda. How do you get into the other person's head? You're, you're saying that you're going to develop the characters in a certain way, so we have the different opinions that can appear on the screen. But just uh, how does one do that if you're if you're coming from your own thinking? Anybody can ask that in any in any field. No, I I think that. Um, Sorry, sorry. 
אני חושבת שהשאלה היא איך באופן טכני ופרקטי מצליחים לייצר עולם שהוא לא רק על נקודת מבט שלי אלא שהוא שיכול לגרום לאנשים אחרים להזדהות נכון? אוקיי אז אני אענה בעברית כי כאילו זה הרבה יותר קל לי אני חושבת וזה מה שהתכוונתי להגיד קודם שכולנו מכירים את המקומות הכי אפלים אנחנו מפחדים מהמקומות הכי אפלים, אנחנו מרגישים אותם בעומק שלנו וכשאני נותנת לדמויות להנכיח את ה... ממש בטקסט, בסצנות, באיך שהם חווים רגשית משהו, כש... כשזה נוכח, הכאב שלהם, הדבר שכולנו יכולים להזדהות איתו, אז זה לא משנה אם זה מישהו ש... שאני ממש לא מסכימה איתו לצורך העניין פוליטית או עם הפעולות שלו, אלא מה שמשנה זה שמה שמניע אותו ומה שיש לו בלב זה משהו ש... אני מאמינה שכל בני האדם מכירים בצורות כאלה או אחרות. תודה.